started with the next session. Uh, there is only one paper in this session, and the title of the paper is Computer Aided Security Proofs for the Working Cryptographer. The co authors are Gilles Barth, Benjamin Gregoire, Sylvain Ero, and uh, Santiago Zanella Beguin. Gilles Barth is going to give a talk. This paper is uh, the, the best paper award of the conference, and I ask all the co authors to join up on the stage after the presentation. Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, so we started on this work about uh, five years ago when uh, we came across uh, two very exciting papers. One was by Shai Halevi and the other one by, was by uh, Mihir Bella and Phil Rogaway. And uh, basically they were pointing out that uh, there is a problem with uh, cryptographic proofs in the sense that they are becoming unverifiable and sometimes they might even contain some more or less uh, grave flows. And uh, on top of pointing that uh, there is this problem, they were suggesting a plausible solution, which was using uh, computer-aided proofs for making sure that proofs are correct. And so the idea of computer-aided proof is mentioned explicitly in the paper by Belach and Rogaway, and uh, it's developed to a much bigger extent in the paper by Halevi, where he actually suggests how to go and build on such a tool. And uh, so the idea of using uh, computer-aided proofs for verifying cryptographic proofs seems to make a lot of sense because actually when you go and, uh, <coughs> sorry, use computer-aided proof, you can take an arbitrary mathematical theorem where mathematical theorem is understood in a broad sense and then you can turn it into a machine checkable proof. So the first step is actually to convert the statement of the theorem into a formula that will be written in some formal system, uh, for example, first order logic, and then you have to build a machine processable proof of the correctness of this result. And uh, so once you, you have done this, the person who wants to check the proof has to have a careful look at the statement of the lemma to make sure that what you state is exactly what you want to prove. But then once it's done, you can actually rely to an automated tool for doing the checking. So in our work, we're using the Cog Proof Assistant, which is built at Enria in France for the last 30 years. So every time you see this rooster, uh, <coughs> we will be talking about the Cog Proof Assistant. And because proof assistants are very demanding in terms of the justification you are making uh, for the proof to be accepted, once you've got a formal proof, you are sure that with a high degree of certainty that the proof is correct and moreover that the correctness is built from first principle. And uh, so computer-aided proofs have been around for 40 years, but there have been tremendous advances in the last 10 years, and this is a sample of uh, results that have been uh, formally checked using proof assistant in the last few years. So one of the earliest results was the four color theorem proved maybe five years ago by Georges Conti at Microsoft. Uh, more recently, there, was, there has been some work by Tom Hales, who's uh, working at the uh, University of Pittsburgh on the Kepler conjecture. So he had a proof of the Kepler conjecture and he started to get a machine check proof to convince his colleagues that his proof was correct. And uh, so more recently, there was some more computer science oriented work formal proof of uh, correctness of an optimizing compiler for C, as well as uh, some work being done on uh, operating system correctness. So there was some work at uh, NICTA in Australia on the correctness of the SCL for microkernel, and Microsoft has also a big project on the verification of its hypervisor. And uh, since uh, computer-aided proofs seem to be very successful in a broad range of area, it seems quite a reasonable uh, question to ask whether we can do the same with cryptography. And so after reading the papers by uh, Halevi and uh, Belach and Rogaway and also a related paper on Shoop about uh, using uh, a game-based proof, we got very excited and we started uh, building a framework that would help uh, doing a verifiable proof for 
uh, cryptographic proof. And uh, as is suggested in the two, these two papers, we adopted the code-based, game-based techniques, which brings us close to programming language, which is in fact the area in which we are more familiar. And uh, so we built uh, quite an extensive framework that tries to provide support for the most common patterns of uh, reasoning in cryptographic proofs. And uh, we've been able to apply our framework to a number of examples, including the full domain hash, for which we could uh, reconstruct uh, the proof of Cohen with the optimal bound. Uh, with, uh, more recently, with the proof of OAEP. So initially, we had a proof of NCPA, but we recently uh, completed a proof of uh, NCCA2, following essentially the proof by uh, uh, David Poincheval in his uh, Barcelona notes. Uh, more recently, we did some work on the uh, uh, Sigma protocol, proving basic properties of uh, Sigma protocol, as well as uh, some uh, basic composition result. And our latest result is a formalization of the uh, Bonnet Franklin basic indent uh, identity based encryption. So, all this work uh, corroborates, uh, corroborates the plausibility of uh, building uh, machine checkable cryptographic proofs. But on the other hand, uh, it requires a very high level of Cork expertise and a lot of time which means basically that it is most likely out of reach uh, for people who don't really have a lot of experience in uh, using Coq. And this is a kind of an issue because you might want to spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and become a real expert if you want to prove the four color theorem or if you want to prove Kepler conjecture. But the idea of doing uh, <laughs> computer-aided cryptographic proof is that you can use uh, this tool again and again when you design new scheme to make sure that your security proof is correct. So it doesn't quite fit the job as was initially uh, stated in the papers by Halevi and Belach and Rogaway. And on the other hand, because uh, we are using this code-based technique, essentially when you verify a cryptographic proof, you're doing some form of program verification. Maybe it's a non-standard form of program verification, but it's still program verification. And there has been tremendous advances in program verification over the 10 or 15 years to the point that program verification these days is something which is essentially automatic. And uh, so when you do proofs using 30 scripts, the proof are not automatic. And what we would be aiming at is to try to be able to exploit state-of-the-art program verification tool in such a way that if you want to check a cryptographic proof, essentially you will be almost automated. And so the main result we present in the paper is a new tool which is called EasyCrypt and which acts as a front end for the CertiCrypt framework and which provides computer-aided security proof with the same level of guarantee that was available with 30 crypt, but you can complete proofs with moderate effort, which is very important, and also using off-the-shelf tools, which is also very important because you can take advantage of all the advances that have been made in the program verification field to build your cryptographic proofs. Okay, so how does it work? Well, so the idea we had when we started building these tools is that we wanted to take a game-based proof as it appears in the literature, and we wanted to add as little to it as possible so that it could become verifiable automatically. And so on the screen you can see a sequence of game uh, that uh, proves semantic security of Hashtel Gamal in the random oracle model. And uh, so the sequence of game is standard. Uh, you go from the original game to game one by inlining the code of key generation and encryption algorithm. Uh, then the transition from game one to game two is essentially an application of an up to bad step where you replace the call to the random oracle by a random sampling in the third line starting from the bottom. The next step from game two to game three, you apply padding 
so that you can replace H XOR MB just by H, by the fact that H is uniformly uh, sample. And then the next, the final step from gain three uh, to uh, LCDH is just a reduction step where you construct the adversary B, which is well behaved. And uh, so when you go and see a game-based proof, game proof, essentially you see a sequence of game and somewhere in the middle of the text you actually also see a number of uh, equalities or inequality that we relate the probability of an event in the first game with the probability of an event in the other game. So in the first game, this is just a bridging step, semantics preserving, so you keep the same event and the, you show the probabilities are equal. In the second step, it's an application of up to bad, so you're actually bounding the difference of probabilities uh, in the first and second event by the probability of uh, the bad event, for example, in the second game. And so you keep on for each transition giving these inequalities, and once you have them, it's a matter of simple calculation to come uh, to the final conclusion, which relates the probability of the adversary winning uh, in, in CPA to the probability of the adversary B winning in the LCDH game. Okay. And so ideally, you would like just to be given this. This is a formal object because each game is a program and each fact is a mathematical statement and I'll put a proof for this. Well, we don't quite know how to do this yet, but what we do is that we introduce some intermediate step where for each inequality, we introduce some program verification task where uh, we uh, essentially here, this is a, re a relational uh, a judgment in relational logic where we say that uh, if we execute the NCPA game and the G1 game, after executing the game, the event B is equal to B prime has the same probability in the two games. So in a way, it's closely related to the equality that we had initially, but it's cast in a relational logic, which is a framework which is uh, much closer to what is being done in program verification. And so for each transition you do this, you just give a statement in a relational logic that closely resembles the equalities or the inequalities uh, that were given for each fact. So for example, this is the statement of the up to bad lemma in the logical form. It essentially says, uh, if you look at the right of the implication on the first line, it says that G1 and G2 are equal up to bad, and then the second line say that until, uh, yeah, <coughs> sorry, and then the second, uh, the second line say, if bad does not happen, then B is equal to B prime coincide in both games. And so you just keep on repeating this for each transition, and then once you have this, if you're able to perform the verifications that are given in the red box, you essentially can build automatically a proof of uh, <coughs> the security. And so what is important is that this might look quite complicated to you. But remember, there is a distinction between the guy who builds the proof and the guy who checks the proof. If you're only interested in checking the proof, you just need to look at the first game, the final game, and the statement. The sequence of intermediate game is gone. So if you go to more complicated setting, maybe it will be slightly different. You won't have only the final game. You will have all instantiation of the security hypothesis. But essentially, what matters is that most of the proof goes away. Checking, re checking the statement is much, much simpler than checking the whole proof. OK. So now let's look at how EasyCrypt verify such a statement. So essentially, we're using pretty much the same uh, techniques of our program verification, except that there are some small subtleties. Uh, so we are dealing with probabilistic programs with adversary, and we have to deal with this. So how do we go? Essentially, what we're going to do is go from the post condition, which is the formula that is at the right of the implication, saying that the prob uh, that b is equal to b prime coincides in both game, and we're going to push it upwards. So how does it work? First. We take the code of the oracle, so the Cree encryption, uh, sorry, 
<laughs> the key generation and the encryption oracle and we inline the code. Then we push the random sampling up front at the beginning of the game. This is not the only strategy, there are other strategies, but for our purpose it works very well. And then we can, so this is kind of a pre-processing phase, and once we have done this, we start pushing uh, the, uh, the formula on the right of the implication backwards. So how does it work? Well, the first thing we hit is the code of the adversary. So the adversary, of course, is just unspecified. We don't have a code for it. So the way we proceed, we have to do some form of modular reasoning, which is common in the program verification um, work. And we are just inferring an invariant for the adversary, saying essentially the adversary behaves the same in the two games, or if it's an up to bad uh, transition, we say uh, the adversary behaves the same in the two game unless bad happens. And then once we've gone through the adversary, we keep on pushing uh, again uh, the formula, so we have to do the same thing for the adversary A1, but at some point we will reach a piece of code where we only have random sampling. And so to deal with random sampling, uh, the difficulty here is just to remain in the fragment of the logic that can be uh, handled by the automated tool we're using. And the way we do this is that we provide as a witness a bijection that satisfies certain properties. If you want to look at the technical details that are in the paper, I will not talk about what the bijection is meant to do here. But the important thing is that once you are given the bijection, you can process the formula backwards until you reach a first order formulae. And what you have to check is that the precondition, which in this case is true, and which is what you assume uh, to be valid about the initial memories of the program, implies the formula which you have uh, computed. And this is something which actually can be done automatically with some existing tools. So in our work, we've been using Altergo and Simplify, but what uh, we have built is actually connected to many other tools, so you can use your favorite SMT solver. And so if we really look at the code, how does it look? Well, pretty much as what I wrote here. Uh, so uh, this is actually a, an extract from the 30 script script. So uh, we use the keyword rest to uh, say that uh, b is equal to b prime is equal to in the two game. But if you look at the second line, which is where the comments are going, you say, I'm doing inlining, I'm doing de-randomize, which actually corresponds to eager sam sampling. Then auto means, uh, well, find the invariant for the adversary. Uh, pop is actually the way to give the witness, so pop and uh, repeat random. And then trivial is just checking the VC. Okay? And so once you have done this, you have prove this fact, and then so what you are left to do is just to prove that this fact entails the equality, and this is fairly easy in this case because uh, this is uh, just a standard transcript. If you do some up to bad transition, it might be the case that actually it's not an equality, but it's an inequality with some constant factor, and then uh, EasyCrypt is providing some support to checking that the constant factor that you're providing is actually the correct one. Okay, and uh, so uh, we have been uh, able to uh, implement uh, in EasyCrypt many of the techniques that are being used by cryptographers, so for bridging st steps, failure events, reduction step, and on top of it, we have been uh, able uh, to generate automatically from EasyCrypt proof, proofs in CertiCrypt that can be checked independently using the code proof assistant. So we essentially uh, achieve our design goal and in order to prove the validity of the approach that we've been developing we've been building a proof of the Kramer Shoop encryption system so a proof of uh, security is given in the Shai Halevi paper for the Kramer Shoop encryption system and we actually follow the same proof and achieve the same bounds it's a sequence of 10 games, which essentially corresponds what is in the proof by Halevi. It's about 1,600 lines of EasyCrypt, plus 100 lines of Koch, because uh, Koch is uh, better, is able to use, um, sorry, to handle uh, field equation much better than SMT solver, so we prefer to do the proof in Koch. So if you look at the table here, it's actually giving an indication of the difference of size in proofs between CertiCrypt and EasyCrypt. Sometimes it's a bit of a cheat because we're uh, redoing example which we did at the game, but essentially we've been reducing size 
significantly in the proof script. So if you do a proof in 30 script, maybe all the indications you have to give to build the proof is twice as long as the sequence of game, while here it's 20% the size of the sequence of game. So it's much uh, more compact. You need to do less work. The development time of a proof is much faster, and the learning time is much reasonable. I mean, 30 script is not really usable from somebody who's not using Coq. Easy script is much more easily usable, so which is a good news. And uh, so to conclude, uh, EasyCrypt is uh, a new tool that allows you to do computer-assisted security proof with moderate effort using off-the-shelf tools, so you can uh, reuse uh, uh, technologies and advance in technology. It's producing independently verifiable proof, and it works for a challenging example. And so in the future, we want to distribute the tool, so we were hoping to uh, distribute it before the conference, but uh, some of us have been on holiday, so it will be on this site sometime during this week. We want to improve and extend the tool. Uh, there are many nice techniques from programming languages that can be embedded there, and we want to do more examples. So we started to look at the uh, proofs of collision resistance and indifferentiability for SHA-3, and we've also extended the uh, underlying infrastructure to reason about differential privacy, and we might want to lift it up to um, EasyCrypt. And so that concludes my talk. Thanks for your attention. There is brief time for some questions, please. Yes. Did you manage to find any subtle flaws in existing proofs? Um, so uh, actually in the proof, I mean, they are not serious flows, but uh, so in the proof of OAP, uh, we found some small adjustment that needed to be done in the sequence of proof um, in order for the proof to get through. But like, I have to say that in this kind of business, as our goal is not really to find big flow. We, I mean, it's a lot of effort, and if you do all this, it's just like to try to get the proof right. Uh, I'm not claiming this is the best way to find the flow. This is a good way to make sure that there is no flow. Okay, one more question, please. No, let's uh, join in thank thanking the speaker. <laughs> and I invite all the co-authors to join us on the stage, please. Uh, the best paper award was selected by the entire program committee, and despite uh, um, a plethora of wonderful uh, contenders, the, uh, this particular paper uh, overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly won. Uh, program committee members praised it for its widespread appeal, its connections to an apparently uh, distant area from cryptography programming languages, uh, and for its potential to uh, one day be transformative. Please join me in uh, thanking the, the authors.